Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. We are watching our cloud school where we are talking about different data, different data integration scenarios with Azure Data Factory. In this demonstration, we will discuss about parameters with data factories. So here in this demonstration, I'll give you two examples in which I'll show you how to use parameters with different activities or activity types with the help of parameters and that after the end of the exercise, you would learn what is the parameterization and how it is important to make a professional data factory pipelines or data flows in your Azure data factory using the parameters. For the demonstration, I'm going to use this ADF instance. So here in this instance, I'm going to define a new pipeline and I'll show you a quick demonstration of defining a new para parameterized pipeline which will simply just copy a blob from one location to other location. So let me just copy, use this copy data activity, right, which requires the source data set to be provided. And for that, I'm going to create a new source data set. So let's call it as a new source data set as in file format of, let's say CSV type, and I will call it as a blob. CSV and next I'm going to use the same link service which we already have created in the previous demonstration using this link service we should be able to connect to the container where we have all our CSV file which we are interested in now if you look at here we are basically saying that we can select a particular CSV file in which we are in which we are looking to copy for an example let's say we would like to copy this particular file right but what if you would have a requirement tomorrow to you know copy another csv file or if you would like to copy multiple csv file multiple csv file for different different use cases in that case this data set is not going to work the reason for that is because here in this case what is happening is it is basically pointing to a fixed file name and that's not going to work so what we should do is in that case, we should use a parameterized data set, which will expect a file name as a parameter. And then whatever file name you provide, that file name will basically will be the file name, which it should be using. So let me just copy this name so that I'll be using this. For now, I'm going to click OK. So that will add the source data set. I'll use the destination data set. For the destination also, I'm going to use the same blob csv because i want to copy the file from same data set it just i'll give it a different name but here in this case you can see that my both source and sync both of them are using the same data set and if i open this data set it is currently using this this particular file right i don't want this file name to be used because if i'm going to copy the file with the same name then it's not going to work fine it will say that it's file uh, you would not realize the result right so what do you want to do we want to use a parameter now to use the parameters with any of the activity type or data set or data flow you would find the parameters tab separately where you can define the list of parameters so i can define the parameters and almost everywhere for example i can define the parameters here wherever you are getting this dynamic things right everywhere almost everywhere i can define those parameters right so to the defined various parameters, let me just click on add new. With that, I would be able to add a new parameter. Here I'm going to call the parameter name as in file name. You could have any parameter type, you can have any parameter name, and then you can define the parameter type. So as of now, I'm going to use the string, but there are various options like float, int, bool, array, object, and even the secure string kind of parameter also available default values if you would like you can give a default value but in this case i'm not going to provide any default values now what what we are going to do is we would like to replace this file name with the parameter which we have created so i'll click on this add dynamic content and from here i'm going to use the parameters here you will get the list of all the parameters which are being defined inside this data set and that experience will remain same with data set data flow or any other activities right so once you click on this parameter, you would find that it has given you the name of the parameters as in at the red data set dot name. 
on top of this parameter name if you would like to apply any kind of a functions like a scalar function type conversion functions all those things you can apply those functions from this option right so that is it as of now i don't want to apply any function so my parameter name is going to be used like this so we are saying that the file container is going to be this and file name is coming from this parameter right now whichever data set is going to use this uh, whichever pipelines or data activity is going to use this data set will require or expected to provide the file name as a parameter so as we are using the data set at both source and sync both the places now you would see that at the sync data set and at the source data set both the places you would find that it is going to basically use the file name as a parameter as a data set property and you have to provide the property name so let me call it as an i'll call it as an csv so that's the file name i want to give now let's validate our pipeline pipeline validation is completed let's open this again it's, uh, it's using the block storage so i'm going to use the same data source source csv data source and i'm going to provide the file name as in this file name so let me just open this source blob and i'll pass the parameters like this so what is going to happen now my source data set will read this particular file name it will copy the file and copy with this particular name right so let's validate this if that is going to work fine and that's working fine so let's try and debug the changes so that we will know whether this pipeline is working as it is expected so here is our blob storage i'll just refresh it so this is our file name which we are trying to read and we'll create another file with output so our pipeline is successfully completed if i click on this lens icon it has read one file and it has created another file in the same storage account as we can see here now if i refresh the container i'm expecting the output file to be available so this is my output file exactly same thing if we just click on here csv content you would see the content is also visible let's click on preview this is our content which is visible so that is the example one wherein we have used the parameters with data set let me give another example wherein we are going to use the parameters with data flow so i'll simply just remove this let me just delete this i'll call the data flow i'll quickly provide a new data flow so i need to create a new data flow i'm going to create a new data flow with data flow we have created a videos on data flow previously so if you are not sure about the data flow you can watch those videos first of all i have to provide the data source so in this case data source is going to be my blob data source so i'm going to use the same data set which we have created just now for the other demonstration which will require the parameter but you can see that here it is not asking the parameter whereas when we have added this uh, data set at the pipeline level it was immediately asking for the parameter but not at the workflow level the reason for that is because parameters are not expected to be provided at the workflow level because workflow you cannot independently execute the workflow the pipelines are something which you can independently execute it so these workflows are supposed to be executed from a pipeline so when you attach these workflow to the pipeline that time you would expect it to provide the parameters so as it is basically using the workflow next i'm i would like to let's say copy the file or insert this particular output file or input file to the organization's table or the sql server table so let me just open my sql server table so where i have this organization table so what i am going to do is i am going to truncate this table truncate table right and then table name so that is successfully truncated let me just refresh it so i want to read or insert a record into this table using the parameters right so you can see that this is the structure no records are found and exactly the same structure we have it in our input file as well which is this file which we are going to use for insert purpose right so sync is the source data set we have to provide a sync data set here in this case so sync 
I, again I need to provide another data set so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a SQL server data set here again I'm going to use the data set so I need to provide the name as in SQL right and only contains in the underscore you have to do it name as in SQL server same link service I'm going to use here you can specify the table name as in the table which is already available but in my example as we are talking about the parameters so I'll be using the parameters instead of choosing the table name which is coming fixed uh, and assuming that the table already present but let's say if table is not present we want to use the table dynamically so I'm going to use that option so let's click on ok so data set is ready so if I click on this data set which is just now created as of now the table name is empty so I'll click on this edit option I'll specify the DPO as an schema you can also parameterize the schema as well here in this table name what I'm going to do is I'm going to add new parameters to table name and then I'll call it as a table and then here the name of the table right this is the table name now what is going to happen is or maybe I just don't want to give a default value we'll call it as table name table name is created and that is it in our data flow pipeline now if you go back to our pipeline where we have our data flow you would see that we have two parameters which we need to provide first parameter is the file name which it is expected to read and second parameter is the table name so table name i have already copied so i'll use that and the file name i'm going to use this file name so both the parameters have use now one at the source one at the sink and then i will validate the pipeline the pipeline should says that it should please select the table name so let me just see why it is saying the please select the table name yes because we have defined the parameters but we have not defined these parameters here in the dynamic content so we have to define it like this as i said dot table name and then after that it should successfully validate it yes validation is completed now so let's run this and see if this is using the parameters from two different sections right so our pipeline is successfully completed let's verify the result again you can verify the result from the data flow i would simply create or verify the result directly from this data storage so let me just refresh my table and see if that has received any record yes it has received all those records from the from that csv file to the sql server and that too we have defined with the help of parameters right with the help of two different side of set of parameters like i mentioned parameters options are available everywhere and you can define those and make use of the parameters and generalize your pipeline the way you want to i hope you have found this useful and you would be able to use the parameters to productionize your pipelines or the activities in your data factory if it is please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching it see you in the next video